Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Made in New England interview series, where we talk with New England-based companies and the people who lead them. I'm your host, Steve DeVries, and today I'm joined by Paul Selyu, founder and CEO of Little Leaf Farms. Paul, thanks for joining us. Steve, thanks for inviting me. All right. Happy to have you here. So, Paul, I always like to get started by asking our guests, tell us a little bit about you and your background and what your company does. Great. Well, I'm a uh, I'm, I'm a rare person because I grew up in a farm family in New England. Uh, New England is not a big farming region of the United States. Uh, <clears throat> and many people don't realize over 90% of the food that we eat here in New England is grown elsewhere, either in other parts of the United States or around the world. But having said that, I was born and raised in a uh, uh, a farm family. My brother and his family own and operate Pride's Corner Farms, the largest ag business in Connecticut. Ornamental horticulture, everything you plant outside your home. And I pursued uh, high-tech greenhouse agriculture, uh, trying to you know, move that 10% of what we grow in New England to a higher number. I'm a really strong believer in higher quality, fresher, locally grown foods and using state-of-the-art controlled environment, agriculture, greenhouse systems, that's exactly what we're doing at Little Leaf Farms. Paul, it's exciting. And uh, I was checking out your webpage a little bit. And I think for most of our listeners, uh, they'll probably agree with me when when uh, I say you're a very recognizable brand. I see it where I go food shopping. And so it's exciting to have somebody uh, that's growing something that, that uh, is actively being used in my own kitchen. So uh, thank you for that. So Paul, you have a, a career in agriculture. And so what do you think has driven your success uh, throughout that career up to this point? Well, um, first off, had a great foundation with, uh, with my family and my parents and how I was raised. Uh, have a degree in plant science from Cornell University. And I uh, have been around uh, agriculture and growing plants for most of my life. So from that standpoint, uh, there's been great innovations uh, in, in what we call controlled environment agriculture. And unlike growing in the soil, where in New England, obviously, you only can do that seasonally, we grow year round. So we operate Little Leaf Farms, our 10 acre greenhouse in Devons, Mass, 365 days a year. The plants are always growing. We're seeding, we're harvesting 365 days a year. And that guarantees our customers the freshest product. And often their alternative is product that was grown over 3,000 miles away in California or Arizona, which is where over 90% of the leafy greens are grown in, the nor in North America. So we're all about product quality and freshness, and you, you only can do that by growing local. True enough. So for, you know, you mentioned a little earlier that, you know, agriculture is a relatively small industry here in New England. So maybe for the benefit of our listeners who haven't been part of that industry, can you take us inside a little bit and in terms of what it's like to work in an agricultural based business? Sure. Um, first, you have, you have to start with the consumer. And I saw a clip years ago, and I think it's pretty true today. And they were interviewing a person in a grocery store and they said, well, what do you think about the plight of the American farmer? And the person said, what do you mean I buy all my food in the grocery store? So our infrastructure is so incredible in this country, right? Uh, that those beautiful fruits and vegetables you see at a New England grocery store uh, what was taken to grow that and distribute that and get it into the grocery store, it's absolutely amazing. And it's uh, part of the strength of our country, right? That we have this vast infrastructure that just works behind the scenes. And for us, uh, we organized our business. Uh, it's around the quality of the product. And if you're going to have a high quality product, you need to have you know, the healthiest plant. And for us, it's all about the crop. We've organized the, our people around the health of the crop. We have over 15 million live plants in my greenhouse here in Devons, Mass at any one time. 
And we figure in a worst case scenario, we would have five hours if we had some catastrophic event. For instance, you know, cold winter day, a hot summer day, all of that. So, you know, I just am so blessed to work with great, great people. That's amazing. 15 million plants. So it, agriculture is a business. And, you know, for business uh, geeks like me, I'm a, I'm a self-proclaimed business nerd. Uh, what types of metrics or uh, KPIs do you look at for your business to know that you're on track where you want the business to go? Sure. We have an annual operating plan and we track against that. So we have a number of metrics and KPIs uh, around that. But this business runs on a day-to-day -day basis. And one of our core values is day-to-day -day execution, you know, and the crop is in charge. So we are here in service of the crop. And the only way that we can run this business well and produce the kind of consistent products that our customers are used to is an intense focus on day-to-day -day execution. And that's that's a function of me working with just great people. Wow. So when you put when you put it that way, that the crop is in charge, it really puts what you do in a whole different uh, mind frame for me, right? Because usually we're we're thinking about controlling production environments and and managing people. Yet your business is really up to what it is that you're growing, the crop itself. So that's that's a really interesting uh, way to look at a business. Well, and we also have, you know, hundreds of sensors in the greenhouse. We're measuring everything, temperature, humidity level, CO2 level, uh, obviously the amount of water, irrigation, the fertility level in our water. Um, we're constantly uh, looking for any potential harmful pests that could enter the greenhouse, right? One of the things that our customers really appreciate, we don't use any pesticides. So it's a pesticide-free product. Uh, we use something called biological control. So if we find a insect like a thrip or an aphid that actually would eat our lettuce, we release a carnivorous insect that would eat the herbivorous insect. So uh, it's quite effective, uh, really works well when you have a controlled environment the way we do. And as a result, you'll never have any kind of pesticide residue on our product. So it's pull it out of the package and feel ready to, to eat right out of the package. So that's an amazing story. And, and this is exactly why uh, Made in New England exists. Because you think about the, the hundreds of thousands or millions of people driving up and down 495 and Route 2 in Massachusetts, driving right by where you're located. And you, know, you said it earlier, I think people take for granted where that food comes from and what goes into it. And when you hear cool stories like that, it really puts uh, what you do into perspective. So thanks for, for sharing that. So, so when you think about uh, the future of your business, what excites you about that? Well, I mean, New England needs to be more resilient, right? Um, all regions need to be more resilient. And when I hear the number that we only produce 10% of the food that we eat, Yes, great that we live in this society uh, and we have all this trading going on with other parts of the country and other parts of the world. I'm a free trade person. I think that that's great. But we found during the pandemic when there was all kinds of problems with supply chain uh, that there was shortages in the grocery stores of many products, right? So I think there is a... Not that we need to grow 100% of our food because that would be inefficient because there are things such as comparative advantage where products are, are just better able to grow in other regions, but we should grow more than 10. And there's a UNH study called the New England Food Vision, which is I think 50 by 50, which is you know by 2050, we have 50% of the food grown in New England. Imagine that as an economic development driver. Imagine that as a higher quality food to the consumer opportunity. Imagine the risks that we avoid, such as uh, another pandemic. Uh, so I just, I'm, I'm a believer, you know, in more of a locally grown food technology is a huge part of that. A lot of people view it as the red barn and the cow and the grass, you know, all that stuff. And agriculture has evolved beyond that. 
uh, like what we're doing at Little Leaf Farms, but I think New England needs to grow more of its own food. So, so normally this is the point where I ask what what concerns you about the future, but I'm gonna I'm gonna reframe the question a little bit. So, what's the gate? What's what's holding us back from going from ten percent to fifty percent? Well, these facilities are expensive. Um, we've invested you know, over $50 million here in Devons. We had a very modest beginning, um, went to mass development, uh, signed personally on the loan, put up equity along with a partner. But then as we built the business, established unit economics, now Bank of America is our, is our uh, banking partner and we've attracted additional investment capital. So, you know, you need to be able to, you know, demonstrate the competency of a being a good steward of capital, and that way you can attract capital. Um, so I think that's a big one, and uh, for sure. Uh, and then the just the um, I still think the most important people uh, are the actual the managers, my growers, my ops team, my logistics team, my sales and marketing team. My job, you know, as the as the CEO of the company, is to build a great team. And, uh, and and that's the only way ultimately we will be successful. So as a New England person, right, you've you've lived here, you've you've built your businesses here. How has that impacted either positively or negatively being here in New England? How has that impacted your businesses? Positive. Uh, love New England. Think it's the best part of the country to live in. Uh, was raised in Connecticut, but it raised my family uh, here in Massachusetts where I've lived for the last 26, 27 years. So it's just a very special uh, place, special people. The overall New England market's about 15 million people. So it's spread out with Boston being the biggest uh, metropolitan area within New England, but it's a discerning, discriminating consumer and they appreciate quality. And that's where I've really been thankful because you never know, you start this business and the market is being served by all these big multi-billion dollar California companies. And am I going to make it right? Are, are the customers going to like my product? And all the grocery stores do is allow the consumer to decide whether they're going to buy your product or not. So we're all here in service of the consumer. So Paul, uh, any advice for budding business leaders, maybe people who want to get into agriculture or are, are thinking about developing businesses to, to support the New England uh, food economy, the agricultural economy. What, do you, what would you say to those folks? Start small, start modestly the way I did. Learn the business, make the mistakes when you're a small business. Too much capital too early in a business's development, I think is probably causes more problems than, than, than great opportunities. Uh, and then, you know, establish your customers and don't be afraid of, oh, there's this big market and I'm not going fast enough. I saw this with my sector. There was a lot of other controlled environment agriculture facilities. You might've heard of vertical farming where they're not using sunlight, which makes no sense. And they were all raising large financing rounds. And, we, you know, we looked at, my team and I looked at each other and said, did we make a mistake? Is the world going to pass us by? Turns out we're thriving. They're struggling nine years later. So don't be afraid to put in, you know, what is required to get the business off the ground in a, with a tremendous focus on unit economics at a small scale. And then from there, you have a basis to grow. It's a great story and, and a great lesson for all of our viewers and listeners uh, so our guest is Paul Selyu. His business is Little Leaf Farms out of Devons, Massachusetts. Paul, you've been a great guest. I really appreciate you being here today. Steve, thank you so much for reaching out. Absolutely. And uh, thanks to everybody out there for watching and listening. We'll be back soon with another episode. Have a great day.